Hi friends, it's Valerie. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a what's for breakfast and it is part of a cookbook collaboration that is hosted by Tamara from Southern Wife Everyday Life and um, it is all about cookbooks and recipes from cookbooks and I think it's really cool that she had this idea and she's been doing it for a few months now. It's all about just like using cookbooks, physical cookbooks, so like getting recipes not from Pinterest and the internet, which I'm very guilty of doing. I don't have really many cookbooks at all, um, so I've been borrowing from family members or friends, but that's also nice too because I get to see what they have and we're interacting about these books. So it's just bringing an element into my life, which is also fun. So I've got three breakfast options here for you and I hope that you enjoy them. Um, I will link Tamara's channel in the description box down below as well as a link to the playlist so you can go check out all the other lovely ladies and what they have for you. Um, it is of course not just breakfast ideas, mine's breakfast, but it can be anything from a cookbook so I'm sure they have lots of cool ideas for you to see. Um, if you don't make anything from this video, you should at least um, try out the banana oatmeal waffles. They were amazing. We're not huge breakfast people's here in this house so um we do like breakfast food sometimes it's just we don't normally have them at breakfast time and um but wow these waffles they make me want to have breakfast like all the time now they are so so good um they remind me of like just eating a warm like banana nut bread they're so so good and super easy as well so let's just get started this first cookbook that I'm going to be using is a William Sonoma cookbook and it's called Snow Country Cooking. Um, this is a cookbook that I'm just borrowing for this recipes here that I have for you and I will be doing two breakfasts from this book and it does have other things inside of it though. There were lunch ideas, dinner ideas, and some desserts but I decided to go with the breakfast brunch ideas and here's just a little sneak peek of kind of what it has going on in there. I like that there's a lot of like little information and all those little pictures of the different William Sonoma items. And the first recipe that I'm going to be making from this book is spiced pumpkin muffins. To a medium mixing bowl, I am just combining two cups of all-purpose flour with two teaspoons of baking powder, as well as a half a teaspoon each of baking soda, cinnamon, nutmeg, ground ginger, and ground allspice, and then a quarter teaspoon of salt. And just go ahead and give that all a good mixy mix and set that aside. I'm quickly just going to go ahead and zest this orange. Um, I think in the recipe it called for about a teaspoon's worth. Um, I just zested the whole orange. I figured a little more wouldn't bother me at all and it might as well get all the use out of all of that orange zest. And now to a large mixing bowl, I am combining a half a cup plus two tablespoons of firmly packed dark brown sugar as well as a half a cup of granulated white sugar and then a quarter cup of unsalted butter that has been softened at room temperature and I'm just gonna go ahead and beat these with my electric hand mixer on medium speed until they're um, um, combined together you can of course um, use your stand mixer or by hand if you have no mixer at all but if you don't I definitely recommend at least having a hand mixer they're very handy and now I'm adding in one cup of canned pumpkin puree and a half a cup of orange juice as well as two eggs and that chopped orange zest that we had zested earlier. And I'm just gonna go ahead and beat that on low speed until it's all nice and blended together. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in that dry flour mixture into the wet mixture and just go ahead and mix that with my hand mixer um, just until it's all combined. We don't want to go ahead and over mix that. Of course, you don't want a tough dough that will leave you with very like tough muffins and nobody wants that. 
and then um, if you're adding raisins this recipe calls for golden raisins I don't have any and I just substituted regular raisins a half a cup's worth and I'm just folding those in and I think they came out great with the regular raisins so if you don't have golden raisins uh, regular raisins work perfect with this I'm going to be using this silicone um, muffin pan here and I place it on top of a firmer pan so that I can take it out of the oven and it can sit in there nice and uh, flat as well as not like bending with the grates and I'm not greasing that but if you are using a metal tin you can grease it or use um, like the paper cups and I'm just dividing that mixture evenly I gave it all a good tap and I'm gonna bake that at 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes this is what they look like I put them in my little cake stand these were really delicious they had a great flavor and the books had talked about pairing them with apple cider and I thought that sounded really really good so I went ahead and made up some hot apple cider and this whole little delicious breakfast meal was like reminding me of fall so it had all those good fall flavors of pumpkin and raisins and then paired with that hot cider it was just really delicious And the next recipe that I'm making from this book is my favorite of them all. It is the banana oatmeal waffles. To a large mixing bowl, I'm adding in one cup of all-purpose flour, and you'll need some of these quick oats. And I'm also going to add in one cup of those, as well as two tablespoons of firmly packed brown sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon each of baking soda, and ground cinnamon, and then I have this little um, like measuring spoon that says pinch on it and so I'm just using a pinch of ground allspice and a pinch of ground nutmeg and then a half a teaspoon of salt and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of break that um, packed brown sugar up a bit here and then just combine this all together just giving it a good mix and then to another bowl I'm gonna go ahead and add in one cup of sour cream with a half a cup of milk and two eggs as well as four tablespoons of melted butter it called for unsalted I only had salted butter and it worked out perfectly still I should have typically I would cut back on the actual salt in the recipe if I'm using salted butter but I didn't realize I only had salted left so it actually was perfectly fine they did not taste too salty at all and then I'm just uh, whisking that all together until it's kind of a little bit smoothened out you're still gonna have some clumps in there and that's perfectly fine and then you're taking two ripe bananas and it says to slice them up I'm just using my hands to kind of break them they're really soft and the second one of my ripe bananas was completely brown and it just did not look good and appealing at all so the only other banana I had was not ripened enough so I'm just using my meat chopping tool to kind of like mash that all up and it worked perfectly I'm just going to go ahead and add that into the mixture as well and, and then and I use that little masher to kind of just make sure it got broken up in there and I'm just gonna combine that all together and then um, we are taking our dry mixture and that wet mixture I'm gonna go ahead and add that wet mixture into the dry mixture and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my whisk to go ahead and mix that all together until we get a nice smooth batter I'm gonna be using my Belgian waffle maker for this, but of course you can use a regular waffle maker. And I am spreading a little bit of butter or basting it in there. Um, I did switch up to a spray oil, which just was easier than that. And I started off thinking I could try maybe a third cup of this batter for my Belgian waffle maker, but it was definitely not enough. And I'll show you, this was kind of like my test waffle here. And um, it was not filled at all. Um, it was nice and browned though but it was just not the business. So I went ahead and just started using that spray oil and then I'd say after that I used about a half cup's worth of batter and that seemed to work a lot better to fill the waffle iron. And again, I just go according to your like waffle irons instructions on how long to leave it and whatnot. Mine has a ready button and I kind of base it off of that. And as you can see, it came out nice and golden brown. I topped that with the melted butter that I didn't use as well as some syrup and some whipped cream. I gave it a nice sprinkle of cinnamon and I just served this with some fresh strawberries. This was already, we don't normally have breakfast, but um, this was already kind of a lot for me and it was amazing though, like super delicious. If you don't make anything from this uh, video, just definitely give that a try. It was so, so good. 
This last cookbook that I'm using here is going to be this Betty Crocker Quick Fixes book. It has lots of um, quick meals to make and as you can see I have a lot of little tabs here for things that I want to make. It seems to have a lot of good quick easy dinners to make that I want to try out and today I'm going to be making this um, mushroom pepper whole wheat sandwich. I'm making it into a breakfast. It sounded really good as a breakfast. I'm just going to add egg to that. Um, you could also add any breakfast meat you would like but um, first I'm just slicing up a red onion. You're going to need a few slices of that. So I'm halving this recipe because we just don't need that much. So I'm taking about two of the slices of red onion and then um, I've got some red roasted peppers, just a remaining jar of what I had left. And I'm just slicing that up. It says into like one inch strips and then it calls for some basil leaves. So um, it, halving it would be about four. I decided to use about five because mine aren't too large and I do really love the taste of basil. So I just pulled some of those out, got them ready, and then you'll need some uh, mushroom caps. Now I'm not using mushroom caps. I am using just regular portobello mushrooms, like sliced baby bella mushrooms. And it was a little more difficult in the end to eat, but um, way more cost efficient than those mushroom caps. So the original recipe has you grill the whole mushroom caps and the onion on a like indoor grill. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just sauteing this all in a pan. It's just way quicker for me and I didn't want to bust out the grill for that. And so I just placed them all with some olive oil in the pan. I seasoned them with some garlic um, powder and salt and pepper and just let those saute and set them aside. And now to another pan, I've just placed a little bit of oil and I'm cooking up two eggs there and I want sunny side up eggs because I really love the yolk of the egg and I think it's going to pair really well with this and it really did. And I'm just seasoning those with some salt and pepper, cooking those on a low medium heat. And um, once they're like almost done, I just kind of remove them from the burner and let them cook with the remaining heat. And now to a small little bowl, I'm combining a tablespoon of mayonnaise with a teaspoon of like, it says balsamic vinaigrette. I just used balsamic vinegar because it's what I had. And then I tasted it and it needed a little more like mayonnaise taste to me. So I just added a little bit more of that and mixed it all together. Now this actually worked out perfectly because if not, I wouldn't have had enough to spread on my four slices of bread here. And again, I'm halving this, so I'm not making four sandwiches. I'm only making two. So I'm just going to go ahead and spread that mixture on the outside of those breads. And I'm going to place one of my breads down and then just top that with my mushroom onion pepper mixture here. Now, this is the point you're just going to make this however you want. You can add more or less or just divide it with what you have. And then you're going to top that with a slice of cheese. They call it mozzarella, but I'm using provolone. And then you add that top bread on. I did forget the basil, so I opened back up, had to put the basil, then the cheese back on, then the bread. And I saw this um, hack on TikTok where you like use your spatula to pick up the sandwich and then you take your pan, as you can see here, and kind of like flip it on top of your sandwich and then you can flip it without messing up the whole sandwich that is like a game changer for me and once that was done I added in that egg and I served this just with some orange slices a nice light breakfasty meal and this was very tasty but I said like I said very messy just those mushrooms were easy to fall out if I did this again which I would I would add cheese on top of the mushroom and pepper mixture in the skillet let it melt over it so it can kind of hold it all together I think that would make it a lot easier to eat but if you just wanted to dig in this into this with a fork and a knife that would work great as well it was so delicious had lots of great flavor and a nice different option for a breakfast sandwich Thanks so much for watching friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And don't forget to check out Tamara's channel as well as the playlist for even more cookbook meal inspiration. And I hope you all are having a great day.